that's the market opening for you. We'll flash all those details for you on the screen and the Z share will also keep showing but so will the LNT share, the one that will brighten up your morning. So keep that also on your radar and uh, so we also thought that we would brighten up your morning by telling you more about the LNT results. A beat on most uh, count execution leading to a 24% revenue growth uh, which is, of course, much higher than what uh, analysts were estimating. SN Subramanyam, Managing Director and CEO of LNT, joins us now. Good morning, Mr. Subramanyam. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, well, 24% that uh, took everyone's way. But you did not change your full year uh, revenue forecast. You have maintained that, I mean, your guidance. You've maintained that at 12 to 15%. So should we understand that for fourth quarter would be flat? Uh, Lata, before I uh, begin answering any one of your questions, <laughs> sure. I think uh, it's a matter of great pride and, uh, and, uh, and, a, and a feeling of exhilaration and jubilation for us that our group chairman, Mr. A.M. Nayak, has been, has been conferred with the nation's uh, one of the highest civilian awards, the Padma Vibhushan. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great honor. It's a fantastic achievement, both for him personally as well as from our organizational point of view, for all the employees, workers, and shareholders and stakeholders. And more than that, it uh, also tells you about the fantastic service that Mr. M. Naik has done towards the nation, towards the society, mm. and of course from the organizational point of view. So I just thought I'd begin with that uh, very positive note of uh, our group chairman having been conferred this uh, unique honor of being uh, being conferred with the Padma Vibha. <laughs> certainly, sir. Certainly. Many congratulations for that. Uh, yeah. uh, it's Yes, sir. Thank if you, you can delve into the results, sir. Yes, uh, yes, it's been, a, uh, in, in our opinion, a decent quarter considering the uh, economic situation. Uh, order inflow is 42,000 crores for the quarter, that is $6 billion. Um, yes, for the quarter, maybe we've fallen short, but as we keep pointing out to uh, the media and analysts, time and again for an infrastructure kind of business to evaluate the performance and order inflow quarter and quarter is difficult because you get a lump in order the previous quarter last year and sometimes the same thing does not come through this quarter but six billion dollars or 42,000 crores I thought was a decent achievement but if you take it on a nine months basis we are 16 percent ahead and we have maintained our guidance of 10 to 12 percent uh, order growth and we believe that we may be able to be more positive on that. So no, my on question, the sales front yeah, we have done about 35,000 yeah, sorry, my question was that since your sales, your revenue is so good at 24%, why haven't you upped your full year guidance? Why, it's, why is it standing at 12 to 15? Let it continue, Latha, and if it grows up, we'll definitely <laughs> maintain to you that it is doing better. At the moment, we'd like to maintain our guidance as we are given a 10 to 15% growth. Uh, you know, you know it's, it's an election uh, season right mm -hmm. now. Uh, there could be uh, uh, disbursements and such other uh, matters that is coming up. So one needs to be a bit cautious about it. But we are sticking to a guidance and we are quite sure we'll achieve that. Sure. Mr. Subramaniam, good morning and congratulations on a good set of numbers. Since you have maintained your order inflow guidance at 10 to 12 percent, is it safe to assume that in Q4, LNT would do about 48 to 50,000 crores of orders? And if yes, can you throw some more color on where these orders would come from between domestic and international? I think uh, I, I cannot be specific on that, but uh, it is good to say that, uh, you know, though uh, the, the Q4 predominantly, if you see the last few years, has always been good to us. Uh, this year, the only shadow of it all is the election dates and the, and the period, of, uh, uh, where, uh, period where the government orders uh, do not move forward because of the restrictions imposed by the election uh, commission and the mandate thereon. Uh, but, you know, the public sectors will continue to order. The private sector in India will continue to order. We do have prospects in Middle East and Africa which will continue to come in. So overall, uh, I think there are good prospects in view. We are already L1 in quite a few tenders. L1 is being uh, lower from that point of view of going forward with these orders. So some of these uh, are already leading to that. And uh, we still have another two months to... Uh, uh, some of the jobs have been bid, some of the jobs are under bidding stage, some of the jobs are under final negotiation stage. So we are we're reasonably confident about it, yes. Okay. okay. So in your con call, you, uh, I mean, in the press conference, you hinted that uh, since the buyback is off, even the interim dividend may be off. Uh, is that how we should understand? 
No, Lata, I never <laughs> meant okay. anything like that. What I said was, buyback was a way of giving money back to the shareholders. Mm -hmm. Now, our debt as a standalone organization, Lassen and Tuvro, if you see, is just about 10,000 crores. Okay. Now, we have an NBFC, Lassen and Tuvro Finance, which is, as you know, doing reasonably well. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, being an NBFC, this company can only borrow money and lend money. Mm. That's got about 80 or 80 or thousand crores of debt. Now, for a consolidated basis, SEBI has included that as part of an overall debt, which was an internal rule of SEBI and it was not known to us. And therefore, buyback has, has not been accepted by SEBI so far, but we are continuing our dialogue with them and let's see how to take it forward. Mm. Now, whether we do any other measure to repay back our shareholders, which was our original intention, one needs to think about it. One, one is constantly applying his mind on it and whatever needs to be done towards that will be done. Okay. okay. So, if an interim dividend is off the table, suppose you decide not to go in for that, what are the other measures that you could be doing and will you be able to meet that ROE target of 18% that you had laid out for, the long-term target? Uh, yes, let me answer that question first. Uh, the ROE target is, uh, is, is on its way. As you've seen, we mo already moved up on that to about 16, and we will move up to the target that we have set in a short while. Mm -hmm. I don't think uh, the buyback as such uh, affects the ROE part <coughs> of it. But there are many other ways to re reward the shareholders, including uh, interim dividend, as you said, major investments, and so on and so forth. So we will evaluate possibilities. The dialogue with SEBI is still on, and we, have, and we will see the possibilities thereon as we go forward. So, Mind Tree, are you interested in that company? I mean, it'll be a great uh, merger for your own uh, uh, technology subsidiaries. Uh, you, is the, are you an interested party? Media seems to be more interested in us buying Mind Tree than than what we perceive and think. So, <laughs> that's it's not an answer, to hear sir. All the news. Uh, <laughs> But as I said, uh, uh, as, as such, there is, uh, uh, we, uh, there, there, these are all speculative and it's not in the realm right now. And, uh, and, and I think let's keep it that way right now. Okay. okay. Well, let so, me come to the other thing that you said at the press conference, uh, that you all will look to monetize your realty uh, projects. Uh, they're really cash rich. Uh, I mean, uh, what is the monetization plan? Of, 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 of which one? I didn't understand the, the question. The realty. You said you would monetize some of your realty projects. No, we recently sold one of our projects and that has been uh, part of the, uh, uh, the Q3 accounts. And uh, uh, it, it is not uh, uh, monetizing the reality. It is we have properties being uh, built in uh, Powai, in Bangalore and in other places. And uh, there are many ways of doing it. And one is the residential part of it, which is a direct sale. Uh, the, there is also a commercial part of it, where uh, with, in the previous uh, matters, where we have built commercial spaces, given it on rent and, and monetized it. And sometimes we have sold the entire building. Uh, there's also a view that why don't we build properties and have regular leasing income from it because that serves as an annuity income for the future. So many possibilities are there in real estate and these are being evaluated. There's nothing as there is a planned uh, monetization or or any such as we move forward on that. Okay. Uh, so since, since we have you with us, I wanted to understand what the situation on the <laughs> ground is because the common perception over the last 12 months was that uh, bulk of the orders are coming in from government and private sector capex is still very muted. Has there been any change to that? Yeah, there has been some trend towards uh, private orders. Uh, we've seen some movement on the industrial side. We've seen some movement on the airport uh, uh, side. There are major airports uh, uh, coming up for uh, expansion. Uh, we have won the, uh, the Bangalore airport recently. Uh, we have uh, we have bid for the modernization of both the Delhi and uh, not modernization, you could say modernization, expansion of both the Delhi International Airport and Bangalore International Airport. Uh, so there are movements on the private side. You have the industrial side expansion taking place. We have we see a revival in, in the steel sector in the in the zinc and alumina sector. So we do see chances there. Uh, these have been our traditional forte in areas. We have process knowledge, we have the capacity to build up some of these huge smelters and, and, uh, and uh, process plants related thereon. So we have our capabilities there. Uh, the one dampener is the real estate side, which is still not picking up. As you know, we have buildings and factories, which relies 
uh, to a large extent on uh, building uh, huge gated uh, uh, commercial complexes for the IT sector as well as on the residential side. That has been a bit uh, muted and uh, that revival will significantly alter the position on the private sector investment. But beyond that, on the industrial and, 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 and the infrastructure side, yes, we do see possibilities. Okay, well, just to end where we began, uh, but, you know, after produ producing a 24% growth in revenues, uh, you are still not increasing your guidance for the full year. Uh, why are you worried about the fourth quarter? What is, uh, you know, the calculation gives the Let impression that you heart. will be flat. We're all working very hard. <laughs> no, no, I'm our heart, Lata, we're working very hard. <laughs> at our base, at our base, to increase it by that uh, amount of sales is significant. Mm. Uh, the backlog is good. Uh, almost all the projects are moving well. And uh, if we can push it, we'll push it further. Okay. okay. All right, uh, Mr. Subramanian. Not the idea was not to push. The idea was just to ask if there was any uh, worry uh, <laughs> in the backdrop. Thank you very much, sir for joining us with all those details ahead of the market's opening. And LNT has got a thumbs up. It's about a 1% higher on that stock That's after true. the numbers. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Mr. Subramanian.